everyone, my name is Rachel. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I am here to bring you guys a little bit of a different video from me. I have a list of 10 books that I plan on reading in the next couple of months that I think I'm going to really, really love and give five stars. And so I've seen a couple of booktubers that I follow do this kind of video. I know Kayla from Books and Lala and Jess from Peace Love Books have both done this where they do their five star predictions. And so I thought this would be really fun as well because I want to do a follow up video when I read all 10 of these books and I can tell you guys if I gave these books five stars and why or why not. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump into it. Most of these are going to be romance novels, but I think I have one or two like YA books mixed in there. So the first one I want to talk about is Brutal Prince by Sophie Lark. I still have not read anything by Sophie Lark. This book in particular is on my November TBR, so if it does not get read by the end of the month, I will be very mad at myself. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, but this is book one and I think it's like her brutal birthright series and the plot sounds amazing. It's a hate to love arranged marriage. The heroine like sets a fire in the hero's house. Okay, so this has to do with the Irish Mafia and I guess their families think that to prevent all out warfare, these two people need to get married to each other. I've heard that these two characters literally want to kill each other at the beginning of the book, so that sounds like an amazing hate to love situation. Next up we have The Rake Hell of Roth by Amelie Howard. So this is book two in a series. I read book one, which is The Beast of Bezik. Last year, I believe, I loved that book. I gave it five stars, so I have a feeling I'm going to give this one five stars as well, in particular because this is a marriage in trouble story. If you know nothing about me, just know that the marriage and trouble trope is probably my favorite romance trope ever. So we have the Marquis of Roth. He is married, but he doesn't really want to be. And apparently him being married actually isn't very good for business um, of running a gambling den or a gambling hell. So basically three years go by, our heroine Isabel and our Marquis have been separated this entire time. And so Isabel decides that enough is enough. She's tired of all the scandal surrounding her husband. And so it sounds like she goes to London to confront him. And this just sounds so good. I am obsessed with historical romances that take place in gambling dens or gambling hells. I just love that type of environment for historical romances. So this sounds like it'll be a fun time. Next up we have Her Soul to Take by Harley LaRue. This is another book that is on my November TBR. Will it actually get read this month? Probably not if I'm being honest with myself. There are just so many other books that I want to read like right now. Um, but I read The Dare by Harley LaRue in October, one of my favorite books of that month. I loved it so much. That one is a very dark and twisted new adult romance. I just love the vibe that Harley LaRue has. And so I've just heard nothing but phenomenal things about this book in particular. It sounds like something that is going to be right up my alley because I loved The Dare so much. This one's more of a paranormal romance though. We have our hero who's a demon and our heroine I believe is being sacrificed to this demon. That's all I know about the plot. That's all I really need to know about the plot. Next up we have My American Duchess by Eloisa James. I am planning to read this in December because it is the December pick for the Rake Appreciation Society book club, which is a book club run by Crystal from Crystal's Bookish Life and Jen from The Book Refuge. So I will link both of their channels down in the description below, of course. This historical romance has been on my radar for a while and it sounds like a lot of people who love Eloisa James, like this is their favorite book by Eloisa James. So that's really exciting. This is also one of the few standalone novels that she has. This one is about Mary and Trent. So Trent is a duke. He has always had his sights on marrying a well-bred English woman, but then he meets Mary who is an American heiress. And she has some scandal surrounding her because she has had two fiancés in the past but never married either one of them. And she is now engaged for the third time to somebody, but Trent really just falls in love with her and wants to marry her himself. But she doesn't want to jilt yet another fiance. That's kind of 
her main thing so it sounds like there's going to be a lot of angst involved. I've just heard nothing but phenomenal things about this book. Next up we have Window Shopping by Tessa Bailey. If you watched my most recent video which was my Christmas romance TBR you will know that this is the book out of all the books I talked about in that video that I am the most excited to get to this holiday season. So this is about our heroine who was actually recently released from prison and she's the grumpy one and Aiden our hero is the sunshine character. He wears bow ties. They meet because he's the manager of a department store. Um, basically our heroine happens to be walking by and she realizes that the window display in front of the store just looks terrible to her and Aiden just happens to be right there. He asks for her opinion. She lays into it and then he's like, um, I'm the manager of the store. Okay, thanks. And so he ends up giving her a job and this just sounds wonderful because Aiden is like the perfect sunshiny hero who also talks dirty in bed. So basically the most perfect man imaginable. So next up we have Sinner by Sierra Simone. So I very recently read Priest and Midnight Mass which is a sequel companion novella to Priest. Um, and so this book is kind of a companion to those other two books in that uh, this one centers around Sean who is the brother of the hero from Priest. And as you can tell from the title, Priest was a priest romance. Um, and this one is about Sean. He's definitely a womanizer and I believe he gets together with this woman who's preparing to be a nun. So that just sounds like the perfect taboo time. I am already absolutely obsessed with Sierra Simone's writing from reading Priest and Midnight Mass. So I already know that I'm going to love this book simply for the writing alone, but I hope that I love the romance as well. Next up we have All the Feels by Olivia Dade. Oh my goodness, I am so pumped for this book. This is book two in her spoiler alert series. I believe that's what the series is called, but it's basically a companion sequel novel to Spoiler Alert, which is a book that I read back in January. I absolutely loved that book. Olivia Dade is quickly becoming one of my new favorite romance authors. This one, oh my god, sounds like so much fun. We met these characters in book one. We're centering around Alexander who is an actor. He has ADHD. Uh, it sounds like he's a very sunshiny character. And then we have Lauren who is a former ER therapist who has been hired basically to keep Alexander in line because he's just kind of crazy and all over the place. And that dynamic sounds absolutely awesome. Like I said, we saw them in spoiler alert and I was already obsessed with both of their characters. And next up we have Well Matched by Jen DeLuca. This is book three in her Well Met companion romance series that centers around this small town that has a renaissance fair every summer. I have been dying for this book since reading the first book Well Met because of the characters that it's going to center around. We have April who is the sister of the heroine from book one and then we have Mitch who is basically in their friend group and this is kind of a grumpy sunshine vibe going on with April being the grumpy one and Mitch being more of the sunshiny like outgoing character. This also has the fake dating trope which I did not realize until I just read the synopsis and that makes me all the more excited to read it. Basically uh, Mitch has a family get together event coming up and he wants to be seen as more serious to his family and so he thinks if he brings home a girlfriend that that would do the trick. And so April reluctantly agrees to do so and that just sounds like so much fun. Next up we have Love and Other Words by Christina Lauren. This is a seemingly very random book to include in this video because this book came out quite a few years ago but uh, a lot of people view this as Christina Lauren's best book out there. It sounds like it's an emotional friends to lovers romance. I really don't know anything much more than that and I'm totally fine going into this book blind. Um, it also sounds like this is much more of a serious book for Christina Lauren. Definitely their more recent books have been rom-coms. I'm not exactly sure about their earlier works like Beautiful Bastard, like that whole series. I'm not sure if those are rom-coms or not. Um, but from what I understand this definitely has a very very different vibe 
from their more recent work. And that actually makes me more excited to read this because um, I have not been blown away by their most recent works, but this one sounds like it's going to be really great. And last but certainly not least, this is a very different book from the rest of the books that I featured in this video. This is Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. This is a book that I have been meaning to read for quite some time. This was actually featured in the 21 books I want to read in 2021. I will of course link that video up in the cards above if you are interested, but I have two books left off of that list to read. So that's really exciting. But this is a YA sci-fi novel. It's actually a series. The third book I believe is already out at this point or is going to come out in December. It's coming out really, really soon. I also know that there's novellas in this series that have been coming out, but this uh, centers around our main character, Spensa, and she wants to be a pilot in like their army, it sounds like, but there's kind of some controversy surrounding her family because her father was also a pilot in their military. And I think he like deserted the job or something. I don't really remember. But yeah, she's definitely feeling the effects of that controversy. And I've just heard incredible things about this book. I'm also just very interested to check out Brandon Sanderson. Um, so I thought that reading one of his YA novels would be the way to go as opposed to trying to jump into his adult fantasy books because those books are very chunky and they seem very dense. So I thought that starting with a book like this would be the better way to go to kind of jump in to Brandon Sanderson's works. All right, guys, that's going to be it for the 10 books that I think I'm going to truly love and give five stars. I would love it if you would leave a comment down below telling me about some books that you think you are absolutely going to love that are on your TBR. And with all that being said, I would love it if you would leave a like and subscribe. And I thank you so much in advance if you do. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!